guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. Welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mass making sessions. We are up to week number 210, would you believe? So for those people who don't watch my channel, we are doing reruns. We did the first 100 weeks, we did a second lot of 100 weeks, we did a 10 week extra time, and now we're doing the third round of, of um, the original mass makings. So what are we mass making today? We are mass making envelope pockets for junk journals so envelope pockets for junk journals they are very quick and easy pockets and what will you need if you want to create a long you are going to need some envelopes now the envelopes that I have chosen and I have chosen these envelopes every single time that I have done this particular pocket I have chosen um DL size envelopes now DL size envelopes let's just check what sort of size that they are they are two four six eight eight and a half by by kind of four ish eight and a half by four ish size envelopes they are called dl envelopes here in the uk these are what i would call a standard kind of business envelope not the sort of a4 uh the a5 size envelopes but those ones that you just get a single you know folded letter in um so i've got a variety of these now i have to say the majority of times that i've made these i've made them with the craft colored ones they um, are my favourite. I only have one of those left at the moment, um, which is this craft coloured one. Not the best quality envelope, it's got to be said. So what I've also got is I've got some white ones and the white ones often tend to have this pattern inside. Um, so I've got some of those and then I've also got some of these, which are also DL size envelopes, but they've got that more traditional shape flap these are pretty expensive kind of good quality envelopes these particular ones but the other ones are are cheap envelopes so you can kind of mix and match whatever you've got but sort of a rectangular envelope rather than a sort of you know shorter stumpier one so you're going to need your envelopes you are then going to need some scissors and or a paper trimmer now i do not use paper trimmers i can't really get on with them so i will be using my scissors if you prefer to use a paper trimmer maybe you would need a paper trimmer and a ruler or a you know scoreboard or a tear ruler something like that however you like you know to use your method for cutting your paper down is what you're going to need i personally preference you know my personal preference is scissors but you know you use kind of whichever um method that you like to use I have then got um, some glue, which you will definitely, definitely need. So again, for paper items, I always favour the Anita's Tacky Glue. I've got a paper clip stuck in there so that hopefully I'm not going to have glue issues. I like to have a dried um, wet wipe. Mine's a bit grubby because I've used it for several other projects, but that's just for kind of like catching any excess glue. I've then got um, a you know, an old kind of uh, like gift card or store card or, you know, one of these kinds of cards. That's for my glue spreading. And then I've got a variety of papers, which is what I'm going to use to decorate my pockets. Now, again, I have got printables because that's what I predominantly have in my stash these days. You do not have to have um, printables. You could use scrapbook paper, magazine page, book page, sheet music, you know, whatever that you like to use. I would personally try and recommend something thinner. So this is 120 GSM. So it's thicker than copy paper, but it's not, you know, it's not particularly thick paper. That's what I would personally recommend for this project. But it's again, it's up to you. Aside from that, um, you're going to need possibly your distress ink and a blendy tool if you want to, you know, ink around your envelopes. You could always coffee stain your envelopes. You know, the other things are kind of optional as to how you like to finish your projects off. And then the only other thing that you might like to have is if you're likely to punch holes in, let me just grab mine, Oops, punch holes um, for a thumb hole in the top of your pockets, which we may do with one or two of these, then you might like to have a circle punch. This is a 1.5 inch circle punch. Um, I may or may not punch holes in. And the only other things then are add-on items. So, you know, you could always add extra sheets of paper as flaps and things like that. So you will obviously see that as we go along, but they are all additional steps. These, you know, that we're going to be making here, these are the basic items that you're going to need to make the basic envelope pockets. So how do we make them? Let's move one of these or let's move move all of this stuff out of the way. Now, some of my papers are cut down or, you know, they're, they're smaller pieces already. 
and some are full size sheets so we're going to just kind of like um you know mix and match kind of the two different things and i have also tried to like i did last week select them and put them together in how i'm going to be marrying them up only to save you the time of me choosing which papers i want to put together i will try and remember to of course let you know which papers i'm using um, I have to say I'm not always brilliant at remembering which papers they are, but I will do my best um, as we go along. So how do we make these pockets? OK, we've got two sheets of paper here. So this is from my Easter collection. This is from my light damask collection. So I'm just going to put those to one side. We're taking our DL envelope and we're just going to open it out. And what you want to do, first of all, is secure your or seal, seal your envelope, not secure it, seal your envelope closed. So... All I'm going to do, sometimes they're self-seal. These particular envelopes, they are self-seal. They've got this kind of like adhesive strip. It's lost its sticky. Some of my envelopes, I think, have got a, you know, peel-off sticky thing, which again, you know, you could use that. Personally, I would add glue as well, just in case that, that also would lose its sticky, perhaps in, you know, months to come, years to come. So I like to kind of glue here a little bit and then just go here on this, you know underneath flap and then down the edge of this which is your kind of like top top flap there fold that over and again you can then use your card that's your glue spreader and then take your wipe and just catch any excess glue and that makes it nice and neat and you know tidy for finishing then all we're going to do is fold our envelope flaps up like this that's all there is to these. I mean, they seriously, they couldn't be any easier. I mean, I don't do difficult. So anything you ever witness on my channel is always going to be very, very, very easy. Um, so that's all that we are doing. Then you're going to take your paper. Now, I've got do two different papers, I think, for the majority of things that I'm using. I might do one or two with kind of the same papers. But on the whole, I think it's quite fun to have, you know, contrasting papers. So... What I'm going to do, and I like to just put my paper to the edge with a border. Can you see that? Hopefully the camera's picking that up. I've got a very slim border around the edge. So I'm going to take my paper and I'm just going to fold it up here so as I know roughly where to cut it down. Oh, on the back, this is my um, Bluebird papers. It's a little um, set that I've got uh shall i keep this i might keep this just in case i want to ever collage with that so yeah let's not throw that in the bin and then i'm going to take my paper here again and i'm going to just fold it in here to roughly get my guide of where i want to cut it down the side now again this is my method of you know um measuring this is because i don't like using rulers i don't like using um you know paper trimmers or anything I'm not saying that you have to use this method. I'm saying this is the method that I like to use. So I then use my folded line as a guide down the edge like that to cut that down. I can see already I've done that really wonky, but it might not show up too much because some of that's going to be tucked into the pocket. So we'll just see how, how obvious that is. Okay, so it's not too bad. You know, once that's glued down and things, you're not really going to notice it. So that's all good. And then I'm going to take my damask paper and I'm just going to, again, fold it down here. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. My head's in the camera now. I can't really see very well without moving my head over. Like that, that gives me the rough size this needs to be to cover that envelope flap. And again, you know, I haven't measured. I've just sort of guesstimated or, you know, um, folded the flap up to where I think is aesthetically pleasing, you know, what looks looks nice to my eye. And then I just cut my paper to size. And then again, we can just fold in here, oops, on that edge to get our guide of where we want to then cut it down here. So like that, snip that down like that. And that's all there is to these. Okay, so then you're just going to glue your papers all down. So I will start by, actually, I'm going to start by a little kind of um, tip here. And honestly, this tip, I'm not saying I'm not going to necessarily remember this tip throughout this video. I'd like to think that I would, but hey, 
I can't remember things that I, I did or said 30 seconds ago, so I probably will forget this. But I would recommend gluing your piece down here on your flap first. Now, the reason being is because when you then take your glue spreader and you spread your glue out, oops, just in case any glue goes up here, it's not then going to go on your decorative paper. Okay, so I hope that kind of made sense. Um, basically, if you've got any glue seepage, you know, you've got no issues of your paper getting ruined here because actually there's no paper there as yet. So that's all we're doing. Okay, then we're going to glue our top piece of paper down. So like this. Okie dokie. Again, just glue that down like that. And like I say, I mean, I personally like to have that small space around the edge, like a little border. That's optional. You don't have to have that. You know, I think that's quite pretty. But, you know, if you don't want that, then put your piece of paper right to the edge of the envelope. Um, you know, it's completely and utterly up to you. I just think that's quite a nice nice look i have to be honest even nicer when you use the craft colored envelopes because i really like the look of the brown envelopes kind of poking out these obviously like i said they are white envelopes i've got just that one craft colored envelope but you know that's fine i think it's you know it's still fine so just then run some glue down here on your edge like that one two Oops. and then just glue your edges down one like that okay and then like that and again i'm running my glue or running my finger downwards in the first instance because if i've got some excess glue seeping out i want to try and avoid it going over my paper at the top these are all little kind of things that you know they're kind of you know what i what i would call sort of best practice they're not essential and I'm not saying I'm going to remember to do them that way around every time. I'm saying in a best, you know, best case scenario, that's what I would recommend doing. And that's all there is to it. You've got your pocket here and then when you glue it down, you could glue it on three sides and you'd have a side loading pocket. Now for a slight variation, you could always cut the top open and then you'd have a top loading pocket. Personally speaking, that would depend very much on the paper that I'm using, i.e. the envelopes that I'm using. Because this particular envelope, I bought a batch of the craft coloured envelopes, which were not as good quality as the craft coloured envelopes that I've used in the past. So hopefully you can see here, this is very flimsy. I would not cut the top off of here because this is very thin and it's quite likely then to tear going down. But for this one, this is a better quality envelope. So you could always cut straight across the top like that and then you'd have your top pocket as well. Now if you're doing this, again, you can see now I've got lots of that blue pattern in there. Personally, I don't like that. You know, I don't like being able to see the blue. You know, it wouldn't be too bad if my pocket were blue, but obviously my pocket's not blue. So I'm not keen on that. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my damask. It doesn't need to go right the way in. So what I'm going to do is take it down like this because I might even be able to get then a second, second flap with some of this damask. So put that to one side and then what I would do is take it in like that. Okay, oops, like that. Again, cut this down. Oops, here like this. Just going to trim across here at the top. Just because my printer hadn't printed quite borderless. And then here, you're going to slot, oops, slot this. So just to warn you, you could have a scenario here where inside it can get slightly glued up. So I just had that. So I've just managed to kind of un, unstick that. And then this piece of paper, oh my goodness, all being well, all being well, will slide into here. 
So, like that. And then you're going to obviously glue that, glue that into your pocket. Okay, so let's put some glue here. And then here, just run some glue here on this top edge, like that, okay. You know, like I say, I mean, it might not even bother you having that, um, you know, inner colour. Or if it, you know, if it were, say, plain white inside, which my more expensive envelopes are, then, of course, you know, you might be able to bypass this step. This is just a step for if you've got one of those patterned insides and if you don't like that. Um, you know, obviously, if it doesn't bother you, then you can, you know, you can miss this stage out. So, again, just going to spread that glue down. I'm just spreading it from the back here. Let's just pop that out like that. So now what you've got is obviously a very pretty pocket, which of course you've got then this paper here coordinating with here. And it all looks really pretty, doesn't it? So that's all there is to those. So they really couldn't be easier, could they? I will demonstrate one more just, um, you know, so we really kind of know what we're doing. So this is that one with the self-adhesive. This is the one that I said is, you know, the cheap quality. So I'm just going to go in, whoops, go in and stick my envelope flap down. Now, like I just said, this is a cheap quality envelope, so I will not be opening the top of this. So it doesn't matter, actually, if my envelope flap, you know, gets stuck down onto the envelope inside, because I'm not going to be obviously, um, you know, opening it up. So then again, I'm going to fold it up to approximately where I want to have my envelope flap again you could use a bone folder here you could use your scissor handles you could use your glue spreader but just to form that nice neat um, folded edge so let's take some more paper so this is from my junk journal basics and this is from my damask papers I'm just having a look to see whether I want these with this craft colored paper or whether I'd prefer something else hang on two seconds Ooh want to make sure I get the right oh let's have this one actually I think this is nicer on the craft color so this is my perfume collection and this is my I think this is the rich damask um so this is going to look very pretty I think together so again take my paper my method of measuring is you know I just kind of take my paper fold it up and then just take it along here on the guide like that Okey and then again fold it in on the other edge so that I see or you know so that I get ooh, get the approximate width here so in here like this okay like that okay let me just cut that down oops like that and like I say don't get too stressed you know if it's not completely straight it really doesn't matter too much you know because by the time you've you know decorated this and put some bits and pieces on it will probably look fine and actually to be honest by the time that the pocket comes up on the sheet of paper itself it's really much less noticeable anyway so you know that's not particularly straight but it's it's not going to really notice too much so that's that and then we're going to take our damask paper and again I'm just going to fold that over to the approximate top of the flap oops so like that okay squish that down like that okay just take that down there across there like that okie dokie and then Move that out of the way. So take your paper that you've just cut, put it back in here, and then we just fold it over to get the approximate size for, you know, where to cut this down. Like I say, you know, this is my method of measuring. I know I keep on saying this like a scratch record, but, you know, I just can't emphasise enough that if you don't like this kind of scrappy way of measuring, please don't, you know... Um, 
yeah, don't kind of think that I'm saying that this is how you have to do it. You know, if you get on better using a ruler and using a paper trimmer and all of that kind of stuff, then, you know, please do use use that. I personally couldn't think of anything more confusing, you know, and would throw me off completely. So, you know, just kind of do what, what you need to do, how suits you best. So we pop the paper down, spread that out with the glue spreader, smoosh it out like that. I did actually remember to put it down first before the other paper, so that was a miracle. So there we go. I cleaned my mat before the video, would you believe? <laughs> that was a rare, rare occurrence. I'm trying to be a bit better at tidying, um, you know, my workspace, because I'm sure that it can't be all that great watching videos with a, such a messy workspace. So yes, I do apologize. I find it very difficult to um, keep my stuff contained and not be spreading all over my actual space. So, but yeah, I kind of realized that might not be very relaxing or anything like that. So, right, okay, take that like that and smoosh all my glue. Right, let's just mop that up. So again, mop it out on the sides like that okay and then you're just going to go down here on the sides with your glue like that bring your sides up and then do you remember we kind of like smoosh the glue down in a downwards motion first of all to you know eliminate too much excess glue coming out here onto the you know the top sheet of paper and that's all there is to that and like I said, we're not going to cut the top because this is a, you know, cheaper quality envelope, which isn't going to be great um, to cut the top. So that's that little pocket. Isn't it gorgeous? So we're just going to mass make these. So when I say mass making for those people who don't normally watch along, we're going to do it assembly line style. So that means doing all stages at the same time. So i.e. what I'm going to do is I'm going to open all my envelopes out and glue them down first of all so they are all ready to use and then we'll cut our papers down and you know fold them and then do all the gluing and all the bit oops look at what i've just done to my envelope <laughs> that was not very good was it oh dear try not to be as aggressive as me <laughs> clearly i'm oh dear shocking yeah i'm not even sure that i can use that one to be honest i, pr I probably can but I might not because I don't think that's great now. So yeah, I'll save that for something else. Right, be a bit more gentle with your envelopes than I have just been. Uh, so we shall just relax and have a nice time, have a catch up and yeah, have a really productive kind of hour mass making our pockets and things for our junk journals. So I hope everybody's week has started out well. For those people who watch my channel, you'll know that I film these videos on a Monday to go out for you guys on the Tuesday. So for me, my week has only just started. It's a really strange day. Um, it felt cold initially. And when I went out for my workout at the gym this morning, when I got to the gym and, you know, was doing my workout, and trust me, I mean, I'm not, I'm not over, <laughs> overly doing it on my workout, you know. Um, I don't kind of lift heavy weights or anything like that. Um... I was sweltering within, you know, probably 15 minutes. I thought, oh my goodness, I'm so hot. And strangely enough, I've gone from being freezing this morning, you know, since coming home to again now. I've got two jumpers on. I always, I always have two jumpers on in the winter. Um, I'm now boiling. So I might even have to stop the video in a bit and take my second jumper off because I feel really, really warm. So, yeah, I don't know what the temperature is, to be honest, and I forgot to look this morning when I was, you know, coming back from the gym. But it's a really strange kind of day because it, you know, felt really cold at first, like I say, and then it's actually not very cold at all. So, yeah, who knows what the temperature is. Oops, okay. Okay, so what have I been up to? Well, so since last week, oh, big, big, exciting film I went to see. 
So I went to watch that film, Wicked Little Letters, it was called. I talked about it last week. Um, it was on at the cinema. Now, it's a UK film. I don't know whether it's going to be shown everywhere or whether it's only going to be shown in the UK. And the reason I say that is because the story is quite quirky and I'm not sure how much of interest it would be to anywhere else. Um, but I went to see it because I was very excited because it was filmed in a local town. Um, you know, and... I, I love seeing kind of when when you know an area I love seeing that on a film you know um so that was the predominant reason for you know why we went to see it because obviously the trailer and the storyline just sounded very rubbish um or you know not rubbish but not really worthy of a film um so it was I don't know what year it was set in actually I've got to be honest so I don't like to say in case I just <laughs> sound really stupid because I get it really really way off um but anyway, a long, long time ago, it was, I think it was pre-cars because I'm pretty sure that the vehicles were horse-drawn carriages. Um, the thing that's throwing me off is because the ladies weren't wearing kind of floor-length dresses. They were wearing longish, but you could see their ankles. So I don't know whether that's like at Bordium, maybe. Um, anyway, so yes, it was set whenever that is. Um and it was about this woman who's been receiving these, you know, abusive letters. And, you know, it's it's got some twists and turns and all of that kind of stuff. Oh, my goodness, look, I've done here. I've spread it with my glue spreader and got like a horrible yucky mess on there. Oh, well. Right. So we're going to do all of this and then we're going to kind of cut our papers down to size. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of the story. So, again, like I say, it didn't really sound like the most exciting film, it's got to be said. So I went with my son last Wednesday. Oh my goodness, we enjoyed it so much. It was such a good film. Um, I mean, it wasn't exciting or anything like that, but it just left you feeling really good and in a very, you know, like spring in your step kind of mood. It was a feel good film. And funnily enough, my friend at the gym, she messaged me because I told her I was going to see it and she messaged me on Saturday and she said, oh, we're thinking of going to watch that film. Did you go and see it? What did you think? And I said, we really enjoyed it. I would recommend watching it. But I didn't want to say too much because I hate recommending a film and then, you know, someone else goes to see it and they're like, well, this is utter rubbish. You know, why was she saying that? So I didn't like to say too much, you know. So I just said, we really enjoyed it. It really surprised us. You know, we came out with a kind of spring in our step. We found it quite a feel-good movie. Well, she loved it. She messaged me when they got home and she said, we loved it. We thought it was great. And I spoke to her this morning at the gym and she said exactly the same as me. Like, it left you feeling like really, oh, what a, what a good film. And she said she would recommend it to anybody. So if that's showing at any, you know, cinemas near you, um, like I say, I mean, especially if you're in the UK, if you weren't, I'm not sure that you would necessarily find it very, in, you know, entertaining. But if you are in the UK, definitely, I would say, you know, very good film. Um, yeah, I don't know whether you would necessarily find it very good if you lived anywhere else and kind of, you know, maybe it would seem very lame. I'm not really sure. But yeah, we really, really liked it, to be honest. Um, so that was what we saw last week. Wednesday um it was Mother's Day at the weekend here in the UK so it was Mother's Day yesterday um here in the UK and um my sisters they are both on holiday at the moment so lovely Natalie who you know she does the um you know the posting and things in my shop she um is on holiday at the moment with my older sister so Natalie has gone with her son and my sister and her husband so the four of them have gone on holiday and um, they are in Lanzarote. Lanzarote. Um, so, yes, they're having a lovely time because I spoke to them yesterday on, uh, you know, video camera. I have to say Natalie was looking very, very, very red. <laughs> so I'm laughing. She, you know, hopefully she won't mind me saying all of this. I, I don't think she will. Um, she's very good, good humoured and things. So, yeah, we were laughing and um, she said it's been really hot and they were going in and out of the sea and she said to my my older sister who's called mel um well melanie you know but we all call her mel um she said to her oh you know let's go in and out of the sea because that's the best way to get brown quickly so i think maybe she overdid the going in and out of the sea 
but yeah she looked pretty red i mean i have to say when they went out for dinner she'd obviously covered it up with makeup and things and she looked fine but when she was um facetiming it looked hilarious because she was kind of very red and blotchy and we were like oh my goodness you look very red and she said when she got out the shower her son said to her oh my goodness mum have you seen yourself <laughs> so yeah he obviously thought it was pretty shocking as well um yeah anyway so they're on holiday and um so it was mother's day so it was um you know my mum obviously she was here my sisters weren't here so my son you know my middle son he kept saying to me oh, what would you like to do mum for mother's day so I mean I, you know I don't really mind I, I'm not really kind of too fussed I don't expect like a big fuss or anything like that so I said no, I honestly don't mind and then um we went over a few different options and you know then we said you know because everything's very expensive isn't it so he said um did he say it? I think he might have said how about if I just cook a roast so I said oh that would be lovely so he cooked a roast so it was my mum and dad came for the roast and him obviously um and then my older son um who has got a new girlfriend which I think I did mention this a couple of weeks ago um so yep yeah, she came round as well so that was really lovely uh and then obviously my daughter as well and myself um so there was eight of us and oh my goodness my son you know he's 17 I mean he's he's a, he's a good cook and he quite likes cooking but I thought that was pretty brave of him um to tackle cooking a roast dinner for eight people so um he'd never kind of cooked for like eight people before he'd cooked you know he'd cooked for like well I guess the four of us sometimes or yeah cooked yeah cooked for four but you know like a casual meal not really a roast dinner or anything um so he cooked that oh he did such a wonderful job it was so lovely you know kind of <laughs> I've got to confess, my roasts are sometimes hit and miss, you know, sometimes the vegetables are overcooked, undercooked, you know, not cooked, forgotten about, <laughs> who knows, all of the above. Um, his was perfect. All of the vegetables were cooked perfectly and um, it was lovely. So he did a chicken and um, the chicken was like, it was a kind of one that it's already in a bag and it's seasoned and all that stuff. So, you know, that was quite good because then he didn't really have to worry about, you know, doing anything fancy to it. So that just literally even went in the oven in the packet, in the bag. So, yeah, he did that. And, um, yeah, it, it was brilliant. So my daughter and I, she's not a vegetarian, um, but she does really love the vegetarian sausages. So we just had some vegetarian sausages with ours. Um and yeah, she had those as well. So that was absolutely lovely. And what a really nice way to spend Mother's Day. So yeah, and then bless him, he cleaned the kitchen up all afterwards and everything. So it was so lovely. And that was all we did. We Oh, actually, we had gone for a Costa in the morning. Um, So we went for a Costa in the morning. Sorry, this was my Junk Journal Basics Kit 2 and my Rich Damask. This was all the, also the Junk Journal Basics Kit 2 and the Light Damask. I couldn't remember whether I'd told you. So, so, so sorry. Um, this is the Cambridge Garden and this is the, I think, the Pale Damask as well. So, yeah, I thought these would be be quite nice to put together. Actually, I think maybe the this section here. Um, so, yeah, that was absolutely lovely. We had such a nice time and it just, it just felt lovely. So, um, yeah, it was so nice. So, we don't really kind of do things like that very often. Um, we tend to only kind of like, you know, sit down as a family in somebody's house um, at Christmas. You know, we're not really kind of like into having people around for dinner or anything like that. So, um, yeah, it was lovely. I mean, we do kind of go out for dinner and things like that, sometimes to maybe a pub or something like that. But we don't or, you know, maybe a pizza or something on someone's birthday. But we don't really kind of like have people around and cook for them. So that was so, so lovely. And like I say, it was just, um, yeah, perfect thing to do for Mother's Day. So that was really, really nice. And I felt very spoiled, you know, 
with not only him cooking but he cleaned up and you know everything so that was really super so that was what we did for mother's day um oh my son and i also watched um we watched a series on netflix it was called the holiday um trying to think the lady who it had in it I, I can't remember I'm afraid but she's you know a British act actress I've seen her in lots of things I feel like she might have been in a soap once but I'm not sure um I feel like I've seen her playing a policewoman in something but I can't think what it was anyway um yeah it was quite good it was only four episodes which was you know quite nice to not kind of get too sucked in that you're going to have to like commit lots of time to it so yeah it was it was quite good it was one of those that sort of tailed off so we watched the first couple of episodes the other night and then um we finished watching it last night with the last two episodes and i have to be honest the last two episodes were nowhere near as good as the first two it was filmed in a bit of a strange way um it was about these families who were on holiday um somewhere you know somewhere very pretty and lovely and they were sort of in a quite a sort of um ruggedy landscape but they seemed to be able to access the landscape from everywhere which just seemed a bit strange so yeah although it was it was good there were one or two things that were a bit strange and then the story just sort of you know when they just peter off a little bit it was like that so um yeah i would recommend it but not as much as I thought I was going to, if that makes sense. I'm thinking maybe do it this way around, actually, for this one. So, yeah, would recommend it, but not quite as much. You know, when we started watching it, I thought it looked brilliant. And I thought, oh, we're going to love this. You know, in the first episode, we were like, oh, put another one on. And then it sort of deteriorated from there, which was a bit of a shame. So, yeah, that was um, was a shame. Okay. Oh, it's lovely. It's getting much lighter um, in the mornings and the evenings now. So it's the um, changing of the clock soon. I think it's the last weekend um, in March this year. So, yeah, I think it's the last weekend in March. And I think that's, weirdly enough, I think that's Easter also as, as well. So, but yeah, it's already getting pretty light, which is lovely. So straight away when I'm kind of going to the gym at you know six six twenty oh, I mean it used to be six I have to say strictly six um I'm getting lazier and lazier so quite often it's like six twenty now um it's already quite light which is absolutely lovely I mean I still have to have my headlights on but you know it's already lightish which is really really nice it's got to be said so um yeah looking forward to the clocks changing it's got to be said there we go saturday i don't think we did anything on saturday yeah can't really remember us doing anything of note um yeah we must have been really boring and done nothing which oh how dull is that to have literally done nothing okay so I am going to hopefully put a restock in my shop on my website later on this week. So keep your eyes peeled. It won't be until much later in the week, it's got to be said. Um, but yeah, hopefully about Thursday or Friday. Um, then hopefully I will have done a restock by then. So keep your eyes peeled on there. Um, I don't know what will be on there, but hopefully a journal will be on there. And um, yeah, maybe some bags maybe I don't know quite what else um I'll have to see because I've been doing lots of making and things over the last week or so so um yeah I'll have to kind of just see this is my roses papers and my documents papers so I'm going to again I'm going to put the documents in the background there we go um yeah, I've been doing lots of making, so hopefully that will be, yeah, Thursday or Friday, I would imagine. And like I say, there should hopefully be a journal up there as well. So do keep your eyes peeled for that if you're 
you know, if that would be something that would be of interest to you. There you go. Oh, my daughter had um, like dressing up day. I'm going to cut this down here actually because I'd rather get rid of this pink, I think. Uh, she had dressing up day at school on Friday, I think it was. She went as a cat. It was World Book Day. So she went as, was it Mervyn? Mervyn or Merlin? I can't remember. Anyway, black cat. I mean, oh my goodness. Don't you just hate dressing up days like for the kids? I mean, some mums, I think they love it. And if you're somebody who's really um, good with the sewing machine and things like that, you know, it's probably great, you know. I am awful. Just, yeah, very unimaginative. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, what should we think of? So, yeah, not, not very good when it comes to World Book Day, it's got to be said. But thank the Lord, <laughs> she said. And I think that's the thing, you know, because obviously I'm sometimes a little bit on the rubbish side with my costumes she's gotten on to that and now she's like oh my goodness let's try and go for something that mum's not going to just embarrass me by making something absolutely awful so she said oh I'm, I'm going to go as a cat so um she just said oh if you've got a you know black top that I could wear and some black leggings so I lent her some of my black leggings um you know just that I wear to the gym and then I lent her a you know, black polar neck, and then she wanted me to straighten her hair, which I did. Oh my goodness, that took absolutely ages, about an hour and a half to straighten her hair. And, you know, her hair's quite short now because she cut it herself a long time ago, it's got to be said. Um, and a friend of mine who's a hairdresser, so he cut it for her, you know, after she already cut it herself. Um, and it just hasn't really grown back very much. That being said, I have to be truthful, she has recut it again, which of course told her off quite a lot for that. Um, you know, and she swears she hasn't cut it again. I'm not sure if I'm truthful because the length that it is now, I can't help but think, well, if you haven't cut that again, I can't understand why it hasn't grown more than it has, if you see what I mean. So I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Because it's curly, you can't really tell if she's cut it. I know that sounds a strange thing to say, but, you know, you can't really tell. But she's got this awful habit. Oh, gosh, I hope I'm not going to be now halfway in this, this um, kind of face shape on the side of this paper. Let me see. Oh, look, I am. Um, what an idiot. Um, yeah, she's got this awful habit of she will cut the sides of her hair. The sides. I don't know why she's done this. And she's done it about three times, to my knowledge, is what I'm saying. Maybe more. This is what I'm wondering now. Because when we straightened it, it really wasn't that long still. And I just thought, well, I would have thought it would be longer than that. So I'm thinking she's cut it again. She swears she hasn't. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if she had, to be honest. So I wonder when she will ever learn her lesson and not, not keep cutting it. But anyway, so yeah, we straightened it. So it took about an hour and a half because her hair is so curly. I'm going to cut this side in again. Can you see it's not very, um, you know, good with half that lady's face, but also, you know, I can come in quite a bit there. So that's handy because I can get rid of quite a bit of her face from there um oh this is also my documents collection sorry i should have said that also my documents collection papers and i'm going to marry it up with the valentine's collection paper there that's what the blue florals were so i will just bring those in in a second so still really loving using those valentine's collection they just really are quite versatile. You know, I mean, I didn't really realise when I made them. In fact, I, you know, I thought, oh, will I really be able to use them on anything other than Valentine's? But actually, they're proving very versatile. There's one or two that are specific sort of Valentine-y papers. But the majority, I would say, actually work for most things. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so um, we straightened her hair and the reason why it took so long is because it's so, 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 so curly. 
I had to straighten like the most teeny weeny little bits of hair. I mean, literally like practically nothing <laughs> in amongst the straighteners because otherwise it just doesn't really straighten at all. Now I'm going to, I think, go down. So I'm going to do it like that. Um, yeah, it just looks like, you know, it's not been straightened at all. So we took very, very, very tiny pieces of hair and then did it like that. So it took a long time. But yeah, she was thrilled with it. So I don't know why it had to be straightened for the cat, you know, the cat outfit. But yeah, I think she just, she wanted everyone to see her with straight hair, you know, which is fair enough. Oh my goodness, she looked so grown up. Um, I think I've said lots of times before, but she would love to be a makeup artist. She's decided when she grows older and she's constantly playing with makeup, you know, putting her makeup on, taking it off, putting it back on, taking it off. And every time she puts it on, it looks completely different. And she does all these weird and wonderful experimental looks. And um, I'll just do one more quickly whilst we've hopefully still got time. So I'm going to marry up these papers, which is this postal theme with the uh, pink posies, I think this is called. So I'm just going to cut them together, hopefully. Let's hope I don't make a mess of this. Um, yeah, so she's always experimenting with her makeup. So of course, as soon as I'd done her hair straight, what did she do? She got her makeup out and, you know, went and did her makeup, took it off, redid it, took it off, redid it, you know. Um, so anyway, took loads of photos of her, you know, because she looked so gorgeous and, yeah, so pretty. So, um, and then my son took a picture of her on the Friday when she'd come home from school and she was, you know, messing around doing her makeup again. And, oh my goodness, she looked so grown up i mean literally like a grown up so um yeah <laughs> kind of just an insight there of oh my goodness that's what she's going to be like when she's a teenager you know um yeah because she's 10 and um yeah she looked very 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 grown up but oh very very pretty i think i've told this story before but when we went on holiday last year with my sister natalie and her son um we were sharing a cabin the four of us and um <laughs> There was one night when my daughter, she got all dressed up and she, you know, she put on her makeup ready to go down for dinner and things, you know. Um, and she looked so lovely. And I said to her, oh, my goodness, you look so gorgeous. You know, you look so grown up. And she said, oh, I, I look so grown up, don't I, mum? She said, I look like I'm about, and I can't remember how old she said, but let's say she said, you know, 18. Let's say she said um and she said that and then my sister's son I mean typical boy I just thought here he said she said um oh I, I look about 18 and he said uh yeah but your height looks nine because she was obviously nine at the time and we just all laughed so much because oh my goodness isn't that just a typical oh must let's glue this side down first isn't that a, a typical boy thing to say you know kind of like girls we're like oh my goodness look at how grown up I look you know and we're all excited and I just thought oh isn't that just such a typical boy thing to say that you know he, instead of embracing it and making you feel great <laughs> you just had to bring it down to earth with oh but your height looks nine you know kind of like the the sort of practical um yeah I don't know but you know not buying into the fantasy at all but just bringing it back to reality of oh but your height looks nine and um, oh, my sister and I just laughed so much. I mean, so did my daughter, but you know, we just said, oh, isn't that just such a, a boy thing to say, you know, instead of kind of like, oh my goodness, yes, you do look gorgeous, you know, oh, you look so grown up. It's like, oh yeah, but your height looks nine. So um, yeah, we laugh about that sometimes, to be honest. It just was a very funny thing to say. And I just thought, isn't that the difference between boys and girls? <laughs> We like to be living in the fairy tale and they like to be just living in the, you know, boring real life. <laughs> so, yeah, very funny. Right. Okay. Let's just, I'll just glue the sides down at the same time as the um, other bits. So straight away, that looks 
gorgeous, doesn't it? Now, obviously, we haven't actually done this, but, you know, you could then ink around this. Like I say, we haven't actually inked any of them um, that we've made so far, but definitely, I think this one, you know, it would benefit from being inked up. I haven't um, done the insides, you know, I cut the top off and lined the insides only because we are now getting a little bit sort of pushed for time. So I'm not going to do that, but you could do that, you know, afterwards. So, but just because I'm aware that time's kind of, you know, getting on, I'm just going to, oops, just going to, oh my goodness. Oh gosh, I've done that right over at the side now. I wonder if that will move back the other way. <laughs> Probably not, no. Nope, it does not want to, does it? Oh my goodness. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Oops. love this one lovely colors isn't it together so yeah very very pretty okay let's just glue my sides down right, okay. oh i've pulled half the paper off now it's because my paper uh, my wipe is a bit soggy now so actually what i've done is now damaged the paper down the edge but it's fine because once i ink it up it won't really be visible so there we go. Just going to actually, I'm going to put these under my leg because they are not quite sort of staying glued. So I'll just put them under there. Okie dokie. Let's just do a couple more and then we'll decorate one up. So there we go. Ah, oh, so yeah, hopefully spring will be on its way soon. Um, you know, like I say, we're going to be having the light evening. So that's definitely very welcome it's always such a novelty you know when the light evenings first come again after it being dark all winter you know it feels so exciting doesn't it it's like oh great it's light evenings I mean obviously once they've been there you know for a bit I mean in fact by the winter I'm always like oh brilliant it's it's dark evenings you know just because I like the difference and I like the um you know the cozy feel but yeah, first of all, I, I'm i always quite excited by the the light evenings, you know. I just like the changing of the seasons, if I'm truthful. So, yeah. There we go. Oh, my beautiful tulips that the lovely Michelle bought me last, last week. I had mentioned them and thanked Michelle in last week's video. Um, they're still on my windowsill and still looking beautiful. So, yeah, it's still looking like spring has sprung on my windowsill. So thank you again, Michelle. I am enjoying those so much. I'm just putting this under my leg again um, so that that's hopefully going to glue down. Yeah, I'm enjoying them so much. They look so pretty. And there's all different colour ones. There's purple pink yellow you know they look very very gorgeous i have to say so yeah i'm very spring like so very very pretty okay okay right so i shall make this the last one that we actually glue down and then we will decorate one now, I will try and remember to link the, um, you know, the previous videos in my, you know, the end screen. And the only reason I'm saying that is because in the uh, 110, week 110, I added a sort of flap onto the pocket um, going down here, which was very, very nice and, you know, worked brilliantly. So I will try and add that to the link, uh, not the link, the end screen, if I remember. And, you know, like I say, I'm absolutely shocking for not remembering things. So I will just put it out there now. I do apologise um, if I don't remember. And you can always find it by searching up, obviously, um, you know, mass making week 110. 
um but hopefully i will remember so let's decorate this one up with the easter um pocket and the reason i'm doing the Easter one is because i think i said last week i'm going to try and make a little easter kit um that will also go in my shop hopefully the end of this week but i might not have quite finished it so yeah i've made quite a few bits but i've got quite a few bits that i'm still wanting to make for it so we shall see really whether it you know whether it makes it in there now or not you know it could be the week after um but yeah let's quickly do this one so again inking around it so as you can see that was that white envelope completely you know completely inked now looks like it was a coffee stained one so yeah very very pretty okay so with my easter papers let me just see i'm sure i printed some off in um thicker thicker paper so let me just see if they are buried here on my desk oh that might be it oh no this is still the thin paper oh well that's fine i might just use the might just use the thin thin paper so uh do we want this one or we've got this one let me just see what other isn't it annoying when you print off things and then you can't see them so yeah i'm so sorry for my sleeve going all over the there we go here we go this is it that's the thicker paper so what do we want to have on this little pocket okay i've got quite a few bits here that look very pretty <clears throat> okay let's take this one so shall we take oh, which one should we take shall we take the oh let's take this bunny in the basket so he's off the edge of the page a bit and it's not printed borderless my printer's really misbehaving but let's try this so and I might leave this straight I can't remember whether I might have done that last week I feel like I've done that recently but it worked very well actually so I'm going to have that straight there on the edge oh my goodness how gorgeous does that look oh very very cute isn't it? this is a very juicy ink pad and I keep forgetting and dipping my ink in and then being like horrified because it's like oh my goodness so much ink so yes i should not keep keep dipping it in quite so hard but yeah i keep on forgetting and doing it again um right i've got the I've got this gorgeous lace now what do we think to this so let me just cut this down widthways first so just take it down like this Okay. Right. Okie dokie. Oh my gosh, how pretty does that look? I love it so far. It just looks gorgeous, doesn't it? So, yep, let's pop the, just the bunny paper down here. Like that. Oops like that oh my goodness doesn't that look gorgeous and then for this one actually i had just thought we could could have a little flap going on the side of this so let's just put the lace across here first okay like that okay and then yeah let's just grab some thinking food colored paper but i might be wrong so let me just grab some of that i've just got it off here to the side so hang on two seconds okay and i've also got some coffee dyed paper so i'll just bring in the coffee dyed paper just in case i think actually the coffee dyed would be better so just take two Oops. That might be too thin. Hang on a second. I'm so sorry about this. Right. Uh, just grabbing from my little stash of, you know, ready, ready coffee dyed papers here. So. Um, oh, got some green actually. So yeah, I've done all the colours now. 
So I've got here my food color paper in the green, in this gorgeous pink, in this which is slightly more plummy, and then I've got the coffee dyed. So let's see what would look best with this. Oh, do you know, I'm actually thinking maybe the green, which is really unexpected. I mean, I was, yeah, originally thinking, oh, let's do pink. But actually, do you know what? That might be really boring. Perhaps the green would be a nice contrast. Let's just try the green, shall we? I mean, I might be wrong, but it doesn't matter. Let's just give it a, give it a go. So let's cut it down here. So just going to take it down here. <clears throat> like this. Again, just using that method of the folding and then the cutting along the fold to get, you know, a reasonable straight edge. Not that it looks very straight, but never mind. And then what we can do is obviously have this just folded in here. Now I'm thinking maybe have this double folded. Oh, will it, will it double fold? Oh, that's probably a bit rubbish. Yeah, perhaps we'll just have a single fold then. Oh, maybe that's it. Actually, maybe it's better than this being small. Or well, we could have even had it up from there. That's quite nice, isn't it? No, no, I'm going to have it on the side. Right, okay. So let's have it like that. And I'm just going to see. Oh, I probably could have a double one look. Yeah. So let's do that. Okay, hopefully this is going to make a little bit more sense once I, you know, trim it all down and show you properly. So I've just got this little section which did not cut very well. Okay. Right, so have that on that side or on that side. Let's have it there. Oh my goodness, not very straight at all. Rubbish folding, which has made it look very, very wonky. Okay, that's better, isn't it? Yeah, that's much better. So can just trim this down a bit. Okay, and then this can just hook on to that envelope on the back here like that how cute does that look okay and then to tie that in I can get some more of that gorgeous Easter paper and we can have something else from the Easter paper so this bunny or this bunny probably this one so yeah this might be too big for that paper actually we might have to go for that other one because it's smaller but let's just see oh my goodness how cute does this look so yeah let's just take that down oh isn't that cute very very cute huh so yeah we'll just ink that up a bit should have probably inked this shouldn't i so yeah let's just do that now should have inked it before gluing it on just didn't really even occur to me so let's just go around it now better late than never just do it a bit on the back as well oh gosh remember that that ink pad's really juicy i must not dip it in too much Ooh, okay uh, yep, yeah, let's go back here as well. Okay, and then just a little bit on this edge. Okay, right. That's a bit wet there from the glue. Oh, well, never mind. It's it's all fine. So, yes, we've got that there. Could even fold back. Did I have it folded back this way? I can't remember, to be honest. So we could have it like that, and then we could even have lace trim down that edge. No, that's weird, isn't it? Let's try this little bit coming out. Oh my goodness, how cute does this look? I love that. Right, let's just pop a little bit of glue like that. Okay. Like that. And then we'll just do... Right, I'm just being, you know, ridiculous here using the hot glue but I want to make sure this glue is straight down without having to be 
keep pressing it, you know, for you guys whilst I'm videoing. So, yeah. There we go. Oh, that's looking so pretty, isn't it? And then should we have a butterfly on there as well, I'm thinking. So again, using my light, light butterflies. Oh, use this colour. I was going to use a green one. I think maybe we could have a green one on the thing, you know, the pocket itself. And then we could maybe have a pink one on the little flap. So I did also print these out in smaller size. I wonder if I've got any laying about in the smaller size because I'm thinking maybe on the flap a smaller one would be better oh, and of course of course I can't find any now I definitely did do that but yeah can't actually find them now I've got a little label though that I just found there so this is my label set two. Oh, and I just want to say thank you so much to all my lovely ladies on my design team now have to say, I have not updated my design team list in my YouTube video description yet. I'm having a few problems seeming to get it to update properly. Um, there is a way to get it to update on all of your videos, and I just need to fathom out how to do that again. Obviously, I have done that in the past, and I can't seem to fathom it out. So, um, yeah, I will definitely, you know, it's, it's still there on my list of things to do. I'm just struggling to actually recall how to do it and i tried a couple of times and not managed to do it so you know i can't seem to find where the setting is so i will definitely update that um but also i'm going to do a video showcasing all my lovely ladies um who are on my design team because they're all so incredibly talented um but i also would love to extend um you know my design team with some extra members so it's also hopefully going to be you know in my plan for the next few weeks to also do an invitation for um you know application of other people to to join you know the design team so yeah we've got um you know yeah definitely kind of room for for more um members so again keep your eyes peeled i will be doing a video uh with all the you know requirements and things for that uh and yeah hopefully i'm thinking maybe a little series or something kind of in honor of all my current design team members would be in order so yeah that's kind of on my agenda just just need to get the time to actually do it so like all these things i've sometimes said things and then it's been like six months before things actually occur so yeah i'll just sort of put out my apology now but it is it's on my radar it's on my radar of something that i'm hoping to do um but yeah and it's also on my radar that i really do need to fathom out how to you know how to actually get them listed on my video description which like i say i have tried and i'm just struggling to actually find the original setting which you know i know exists because it it's on there from my you know my previous design team members so yeah, it definitely, you know, definitely that capability is there. I just need to refind where was that? You know, where was that setting? Right, do we think up here or down here? I think probably down there. Okay. Again, just using the hot glue because that's going across the fabric and obviously the paper items. So it's, you know, it's just kind of like a quick and easy way to get it on there. Just put another glue stick in. And then do we want to have that butterfly up the top or down the bottom, do we think? No, because that then looks... Yep, I think it will have to go up the top. And then I'm thinking maybe have some sari silk or something to hold this closed. Again, you know, not essential. You know, this is holding closed perfectly well and you could always just paper clip it or something. But it might look really pretty with maybe some sari silk. So let me just see whether I've got any behind my desk or to the side hang on oh yeah i've definitely got some here right uh now the question is what color i've got this ivory sari silk which is rather nice oops i try and tear it in half because otherwise it seems very extravagant to use uh because it's quite wide so you don't really need to use you know the whole thing 
so yeah i mean i'm not saying this is the right color this is obviously ivory and um yeah it possibly would look better with a different color but let's just pretend that the ivory is you know is the color that we'd choose so yeah aren't they just such a gorgeous pocket so obviously we've got the pocket in the front we've got the pocket here got a fold out flap and then when you glue it down you could glue it on three sides and you'd have a side loading pocket there so they're pretty nice pockets aren't they and so super quick and easy and you know that's what we love isn't it is quick easy projects and these definitely are that so oops i've got one more sat under my leg that i was also squishing down so we did one two three four five six six which includes the decorated one and i've also got another oops how many are these another one two three so we've got six that we actually completed plus another three um that i just need to glue together so yeah i hope that you like them um like i say do keep your eyes peeled because i'm hoping to do a restock video towards the end of the week including a journal um and obviously my easter kit as soon as i have finished that that will also be going up onto my um shabby dabby doodah.co.uk uh website so yeah thank you so much for watching um i really hope that you enjoyed hanging out and that you've had a really productive and fun hour and yeah i'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a thumbs up maybe leave a comment that would be awesome and thank you so much for watching i hope you all have a fantastic day and i will see you guys in the next video thanks then bye